In the previous video, we explored responsive auto layout and how you can use that in your project. In this video, we're going to take a look at another great feature that Figma recently announced, which is variables. And variables come in two forms. You get the free version and then you get the paid version or the version you get when you have a paid project or a paid plan. But in this video, we're going to be exploring the free version, meaning the version of this feature that should be available to everyone under the free plan as of recently. So let's explore what variables are and how you can use them in a project. We will be using, similarly to the previous video, a project from the playlist Designing a Website in Figma, which is a 100% free course on designing a website in Figma from scratch. So if you're interested in that, definitely go and check out the playlist linked below in the video description. So variables, for those of you who are familiar with coding, you might have already guessed what these are going to be about. So variables allow you to store specific values, in Figma's case, that's going to be color, number, string, or boolean, into a simple database, essentially. And for those of you who have no coding experience, don't worry, you can use this too. It's super simple to understand and even easier to apply. So as I said, variables allow you to store specific values into a simple database. And what can this be useful for? Well, for example, let's take a look at what we have here. Here we have on the homepage of this website, we have a layout grid, as you can see, right? We get 12 columns uh, that are 74 pixels wide or points and then you get a gutter that's 24. Uh, this means that you want to design elements that take up, for example, one, two, three, four, and so on, amount of columns in terms of width. And the thing is, it is time consuming to count the values every time you need to create an element that is, for example, three columns wide. So let's just take frame that's going to be 1440, 1440 by 900, and let's rename this frame to testing variables, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this auto layout and I'm gonna apply this layout grid. So as I said, this is 12 columns, 74 in terms of width, 24 in terms of gutter, and it's all centered. So this means that if you create an element that is one column wide, it's gonna be 74, right? But then if you have another element that has to span two columns, it needs to be 74, plus 74 plus 24, right? Because you have to include the gutter as well. So now you're at 172. And as I go on and as I keep adding these columns, you realize that this is a lot of values to remember. And you absolutely shouldn't have to. Now I'm at six, we simply keep adding one column. So you have 12 different width values. If you design a website in this layout grid system, it is wise to create elements that span a specific number of columns, right? For example, this article preview, that's three columns. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a variable for each of these widths so that when I need to create an element that is, for example, six columns wide, I can just choose a variable from a drop down menu right here, right? So it should appear here. So let me, with nothing selected, let me click on the local variables setup right here and open this window. We have a collection number one that I'm going to rename, for example, to design a website in Figma. And then we are going to be creating a category for width. Now I'm gonna click create variable and it's gonna be a number, right? And this number is gonna be called width slash one. I'm gonna press enter and this should create a category width with a variable one, right? So that's the variable name. We're not gonna be creating elements that are one pixel wide. This is just the property name. And the value, of course, is gonna be 74. So let's just type in 74. Now for the second one, I'm gonna again click create variable. It's gonna be again a number. This is gonna be called two and it's gonna be 172, right? Then the third one, create variable and that's gonna be 270. And the reason why I'm using numbers one, two and three is how many columns this spans, right? So that's why one is simply one column, two and three and so on. So I'm gonna fast forward, but I'm just gonna 
keep repeating what I did. I'm gonna click an element that spans four columns, create variable, number, type in the number of columns it spans, and then type in the number it actually, the number of points or pixels it actually spans across. So right now I have a design website in Figma collection of variables and I have a category called width and then I have names 1 through 12 with values corresponding to the actual widths of the number of columns I have, right? And you can also add description to a variable. You can select if it should appear on corner radius options, width and height options, gap or text content. But as you can see, all of these are related to width. So I'm gonna just, if it's possible, select all of them. So I need to go one by one and just select width and height for each of these individually, right? So that's width and height for all of these because, well, we don't need to be, we don't need these numbers anywhere else other than width and height specifications, right? So that's the reason I'm currently checking only width and height. And now how can we actually use this? We can remove all of this and now we can create a rectangle, for example. And let's say that we wanna make a section, make an element that spans four columns. Well, actually on accident, we have created one that spans exactly four columns. So let, let's do six, right? So in width or in the design panel right here, we can go to this little icon that appears on hovering, click that and then search for six, right? Six, it's gonna set our width exactly to six columns. I can also change that to nine, for example, if I make up my mind and then, you know, do whatever I need next. This is also great because you can use this, for example, to apply this on components. So here we have a responsive component and let's say that I wanna make this span four columns, which means I am going to apply a variable, right? It changes slightly with apply variable and then four, right? Brilliant. Now it spans four columns. Now you could also do a rounding. So let me open the local variables again, and then let me create a variable and go for number again, and call this radius slash small, for example, right? Radius small, this is gonna create a category called radius, which I can then access by clicking it on the left side of this interface. And then I am going to say, let's say eight, then I'm gonna create a new one. That's going to be medium, 12, and then number again, large, that's gonna be 16. Number again, huge, that's gonna be 20. And then the last one, enormous, that's gonna be 32, right? And these specific values, you can create however many variables you need. You can also specify whichever values you need, right? And as you can see, you can connect these values. You can, for example, go to width and assign uh, the the width, the three column width to this variable, right? So you can make this really interconnected, which is great for your design system. But for now, let's just keep it simple. Let's just stay with eight. And what I'm going to do is, is also make sure this only goes for corner radius, right? We wanna make sure this gets used only on the corner radius and then try this out, right? So I can select again this rectangle that I have created go to corner radius and then select huge, huge rounding, or I can select even enormous. And if I make up my mind, and for example, I wanna set the enormous rounding to, instead of 32, let's say 44, I can go to variables and just change this. And you can see that it immediately changes whenever, wherever we apply this variable. So it's really smart. It's quite similar to styles, but not really. It gives you more options and, you know, integrates better overall with your design system. And you might have noticed, uh, as I said, that you can interconnect these values. For example, all these values are divisible by four. So if you're using a four point grid system, or if you're using, you know, multiples by 10, 20, some other value, uh, I believe that four or eight is the most frequently used, but don't quote me on that. You could create, for example, a category with, with like basic numbers that would go from eight, you know, 12, 16, 20, whatever, 
and you could then reuse that for corner radius, you could reuse that for spacing, and you could use that for, let's say, something else. Let me show you, right? Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna create a variable, and this is going to be a basic slash or primitive slash m, right? And I need to move this outside of the radius category right above all of these so that it's a separate category. And for example, m could be, I don't know, let's say 96. Let's say that m is 96. And then you could create another variable, another category that would be like, for example, height slash medium, which would create a category of height. And this medium height could be connected to primitives m, right? And then you could create another category I know this is getting complicated. So number and then spacing slash medium. And again, this created a spacing category with the medium variable that I could again connect to primitives M, right? So let's say we have a medium value that happens to be 96 and then you can reuse that value in height and spacing and across different properties. So this would mean, for example, that we could create a rectangle that would connect its height to height medium, right? Which means it will make it 96, duplicate this, let's say twice, create an auto layout, shift A, and then under 18, which is the spacing, I could apply a variable which would be spacing medium, right? So both the height of the object and the spacing is 96, but each of these take this from a different variable. While at the same time, both of these variables point back to right here, to primitives. This means that if I change the primitive value to 200, you can see how this should update both the height and the spacing, right? Because the M value is changed to 200, then the height value is changed to 200 as well, and the spacing value as well. I could, of course, overwrite this and detach the spacing value from primitives m and put it back to 96 which will revert the changes on the spacing but then if i want to change the spacing and the height at the same time i will not be able to do that because it's now separate right so height is connected to primitives m but spacing is no longer but i can again reattach that by selecting a variable and connecting that to primitives m so it is kind of nested like this you can create a nested system of variables and it can be really powerful for your design project and maintaining consistency there are also modes which you can create right here but as you can see this falls under the premium plan or the paid plan and you could for example specify that this would have a mobile mode so this would be desktop and then you would get mobile where these values would be slightly smaller to accommodate smaller phone screens. You can also create variables for strings, for text, colors and boolean, which means that it's either a yes or no value, which is then especially useful if you have like modes and all, all that stuff. So I hope this helped you understand variables and how you can use them in your project. If you wanna check out how to design websites in Figma, definitely go and check out the playlist link below in the description and leave a like if you found this video useful. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.